Is this thing on? <laughs> okay, this is like my 20th take. I can't speak English today. Is my hair touching the microphone? Fuck, okay. Filming this video today is fairly starting to feel like a bolder project. It's been all struggle. Usually it goes so smoothly. No, I'm kidding, it never goes smoothly. I have no plan. Hello, friends. The socks are definitely coming off today. It's so hot, I think. Summer has officially arrived and I'm not coping. Today we are talking about projecting. Recently, Nadira and I went to Echo Valley to try a very long-term project. I've tried this thing on and off for like two years. Each time I go back, I forget what I did before and then I start from square one and it doesn't go very well. <sighs> so I'm trying to be better about things and have a better philosophy and approach so it felt appropriate to make this video today. We need to spot now and there are only two of us. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you all down there on a rock. It was a tricky session with filming because there was a really strong wind. It was just the two of us. We were worried about the crime and being robbed. We were trying to spot safely and climb and do everything. So I have this footage and I decided that it would at the very least be a good demonstration of projecting and help me talk to you a little bit about this and my philosophy. So there'll be some practical tips in here, but it will be largely focused on mental game. Maybe we take a break. I don't think that's gonna help. No. Because I think this is something which so often holds me back when I'm trying to send hard boulders. Welcome to our little cave. <laughs> We finally made it up to, um, what is this cave called? The Power Lines Cave? This is a really great boulder. It's definitely the hardest 7B I've ever touched. And I've been on it for about three sessions. I've done all of the moves, but I haven't been able to link it. It requires quite a bit of endurance. I think today for us is all about enjoying being outdoors and trying to feel more psyched about climbing because we both I think had different stresses in our lives lately and so we've been struggling to to get the psych and motivation back but I think that it's a beautiful sunny day here and we're just very happy to be together and to yeah. be outdoors and I think we're gonna have a really good time on this boulder. Today was a gentle breeze and my my dead cat on my microphone is really terminally shit. So, <laughs> you might just hear like <laughs> and Nadira's mouth moving. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about picking a boulder. For me, the most important thing here is because you are going to commit a lot of time to this boulder, it might involve a really hectic approach, a real slug uphill like this boulder did. You want to feel really excited about it. You want it to appeal to you both aesthetically, physically. You need to enjoy the moves. Try and not focus on the grade as much. Focus on the challenge. Is it challenging for you? Because that really is the only question that matters. It's so easy to fall into the trap of looking for the softest boulder uh, so that you can tick the next grade. I have definitely done this before, especially when I've plateaued and I just want to feel like I'm progressing. But over the years, I found that a grade just isn't enough to keep me coming back to a boulder consistency. I need more incentive and motivation than that. I have to really love the line. So just make sure that you have sufficient inspiration and motivation to keep going, whatever that motivation might be for you. Not exactly a... Not a friend of ours. No. Well done, very brave. You can start here. Yeah. Um, on this, this very chalked up area. Um, and then I started with my feet out the side, but I think you come in here. And then do you make your way across here. Yeah, you go to this, here? these crimps over here. Oh, and there's like a moving little. little there's like thing. a loose 
Look I think this. like every person who's tried this climb has tried to shake so, that thing like, out. Can, 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 we, <laughs> can we get it up? But it's quite like, I don't know, it just doesn't want to come up. But you end up here, and that's all I'm trying to remember mm. for now. So I've just decided that I'm actually going to start um, with a double toe hook over here. If you can talk while you climb, you're definitely not trying very hard. Yeah. <laughs> Put this in. Go across. Nice. Mm. Can't remember what to do here. Nice. Okay, you're gonna need to get your left hand up to the grim. Good first attempt. Good first attempt. It would help if I actually remembered where I was supposed to go. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised by that. Yeah. Good job. Sick. Yeah, I think I think that projecting a climb is so much about finding the most efficient beta, especially when you have really shit endurance like we do. <laughs> and so even on the like easiest parts of the climbs, we pay special attention to make sure that when you get to the difficult parts, you are as fresh as you possibly can be. Like super comfy. Nice. So I dropped my left foot on the op complete opposite side and mm. heel toe cammed with your right foot in the gap where you toe. Yeah. Don't forget to breathe. Unlike me. Nice. They are pads. I'll move it now. Okay, I can't quite remember what I did there. You looked strong. Thank you. I need to remember what I did there. Um, but the, the yeah, first moves feel okay. Getting into this felt fine this time. I was a bit worried about that. But yes, the worst is yet to come. That is like the fine part of the climb. That's the bit that's actually 7B. <laughs> and now... <laughs> That was the we're bit, into the plus. The dubious bit. We're into the slash plus territory next. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I was a rhythmic gymnast and I would cry before every single competition, like properly sobbing, absolutely terrified, envisioning all the things that would go terribly wrong. I would say that even though I was performing, that was quite an unhealthy relationship with pressure. And I think as an adult, I'm really trying to change that, though not always succeeding. I still really feel the pressure with climbing, and particularly when we're filming, actually, which is something I've really had to grapple with, because as soon as the camera goes on and I have this really strong desire to make a good episode and give you guys a send, then it can have the absolute opposite effect to what I want it to. It's only when I turn off the camera and I relax that I can perform again. So I think it's just important to check in with yourself and make sure that you are relaxed, that you are climbing for the right reasons and to go into your projecting session with a really good mindset, which I know is always easier said than done. We are onto the crux sequence, which you go from this crimp and you have to keep this like slightly tenuous toe hook and do a bit of a scary bump out to this sloper. Sorry. It's like more of a compression kind of hold. Sorry. <laughs> this move is very much about keeping your body tension and keeping the toe hook in because if you don't, you cut and then you're totally screwed. So after that, you have to roll into this crimp which is, I think, the single hardest move on the route, keeping the tension, rolling into this good hold, and then once you've got that, then it's over. There's like two options for beta. There's Nadira's <laughs> favorite method, which is just a really difficult and committing bump. And then there's what I'm trying to do, which is this roll over with a very tricky and shitty heel, um, which is incredibly close to your other hand. So let's try do that now. <laughs> Come 
just one finger shy. <laughs> <laughs> my pinky finger is, I mean, my pointing finger is like just outside. All of your weight just sinks into these like three pads, half a pad, and it's not healthy on my no, shoulder. No, it's a really, so it's a really after even move. just like three attempts, you start to feel it. Yeah, so I'm gonna try Katie's beta now. Comment below if you have something that you do to try regain your climbing psych when it dips. We want to hear from you. <laughs> we want to get our psych back. You have fallen in the same spot so many times that you're going along, you're doing your sequence and you think to yourself, this is where I fall. This is in my sequence. This is the part where I fall and now I am going to. And you just lose all belief that you can do that move. Sometimes even if you've stuck it in isolation, you think when I go from the beginning, that is the part where I fall. I think the first step to countering this is just to be aware of it, that you're psyching yourself out at that point. Then I find that reminding myself to breathe and relax through those difficult moves helps a lot. I like to exhale as I do the hard move. and I really find that makes a big difference. When things aren't going well, I often find that I've been holding my breath as I climb. Otherwise, though it sounds kind of cheesy, it's just so important to believe that you can do it. I like to remember all the moments a boulder went from being impossible to even sending it in the same session, and that really gives me hope. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. But my feel was like, here. You want your actual heel to be yes. on this little, like, lip. I just remember that, which makes total sense. For the, the heel move, you jam your toe up against the roof and it makes this absolutely small, shitty edge feel a lot better. But it is just a little, like, <gasps> moment and you just oh, go I for it. For me now, I am struggling to remember how I got into. into placing the heel. Like if I place the heel and then go, I can do it. So this is just like the small missing link. But otherwise, progress. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Heel. <laughs> Very nice dismount. Good Katie's, job. Katie's method is my method. <laughs> How's your psychometer right now? My psychometer is actually like here, this is the top. So nice. we're getting there. Getting pretty psyched. I'm really sorry if there's still some wind noise in this part because the career is just a very windy place. So I think when you're projecting, it's really important to keep your eye on the kind of bigger picture because Ultimately, I think projecting is about becoming a better climber. Like that is what that challenge is about. And so often when I've been trying a boulder over a few months, it's just not about my strength. I think it's about understanding how to move my body better across the rock. It's how to like technically approach those more challenging sequences, which I haven't encountered before. And so I think that while it is still important to sometimes focus on improving your strength, it just can't be the sole focus of that projecting process. It is equally important to focus on improving your movement and your understanding of movement. I think that, you know, strength is really something that comes and goes in climbing. Um, you know, I might have been a lot stronger a few months ago than I am now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a worse climber than I was then. I think that that like technical experience is really something that sticks with you and is more of a, a constant in your climbing career and it is really something which is incredibly valuable. My skin is starting to get quite bad. I'm starting to jack wrestle a little bit, mm, getting frustrated. Which is why I think we should try the end bit. Should we get try out, the top? Uh, work out um, foot beta because yeah. as we saw when I got there, I was like, you're like, ah, what to do? What to do? So let's work out like proper foot yeah. beta for the end and then mm. actually do the top yeah. out. Come on. Nice. That doesn't feel good. 
No, it's also wrecked your oh, hand. Man, you could totally drop this at the end. <laughs> it is so heartbreaking when you make it through the crux and the whole boulder only to dock it at the top. These days, I like to, no matter how easy it looks, I give the top out at least one go before I do the boulder. <laughs> and then we send it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> So I think talking about the bigger picture, it's so easy to wish away the process of projecting because that end result, the send, that high point, it comes with so much elation. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and I think we often feel it will come with a lot of validation, you know, that we are worthy of climbing these hard boulders, that we are great climbers. And I think it's important not to put too much weight in the end result and really appreciate the whole process that comes along with it. And I think that that send, you know, it's such a, a short-lived elation. It's really often like a day or two before you're thinking about your next big goal, your next project. We're never really content. So you really have to think about more than just the send. You have to think about the process and really be able to revel in that as well. <laughs> That's too <laughs> far! <laughs> oh, I was like, oh fuck, I have to lift you out of this thing now. I always tell myself, today you trained, today you became stronger, today you became a better climber, and I kind of think about all the little wins that happened in that session. And this really keeps me, I think, motivated and makes me understand the value of each of those sessions. Okay, I think that is quite enough of the video. I feel like I've been rambling on forever, so I think that all that's left to say is please like and subscribe, ding the bell. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.